It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tim Jeanette. Hey everyone, Tim Jeanette the Metal Meeple here. And in this video, we're taking a look at a character expansion for Yashima called Legend of the Icy Peaks. It's designed by Tony Gulati and Joshua Sprung, published by Greenbrier Games in 2016. And essentially it adds enough stuff for one extra player to the base game. It adds uh, two masters and one kami, some terrain tiles and tokens. Let's take a look at it and uh, we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think. So other than the rules, here are the components to Legend of the Icy Peaks. You get two masters, you get a kami deck, you get some tokens, and you get two new boards. Let me show you those first. They do have some slippery terrain. Uh, when you land on them, you basically have to move to an adjacent space. Here's the back side of that one, and we'll just show you this one as well. Add those in per normal. And then you have these two masters. The first one is Yuki. Yuki is pretty much the frost wizard. I'm just making that up, I don't really know. But she does go around casting frost on everything, which are these tokens right here. Let me show you her abilities here. Her main ability is whenever an opposing master ends a move action adjacent to you, they must discard. When she gets restored, at the end of any move action, no matter who took it, each master adjacent to you must restore. It gets pretty crazy. So, what does frost do? Well first, frost can go on a master or it can go on a space on a board. Now, when it's on a master, that master is exhausted, and as exhausted rules explain, you cannot exert. The frost spaces on the board, you can't, if they're deadly terrain, so in order to move into it, you must exert. So if you have frost on you, you can no longer move into these deadly terrains, uh, even just deadly terrains that are on normal boards. Her adaptability is each uh, hit master gains frost, and here's her tome. She's got some pretty normal stuff here. Well, not normal, but nothing like out of the ordinary. Uh, you can choose some spaces to gain frost. This one, you can equip this uh, crystal staff and attacks are plus one against adjacent masters, and they also gain frost. You can discard to do some damage. Let me do, let's see, this one, spin an attack action. You can use this card to relocate to any space targeted by that card. That's pretty cool. You can move around. Uh, this one is between you and uh, another person. You put frost status down on all those spaces. Cold shoulder and then her final ability, frost, or I'm uh, sorry, blizzard. All their masters take four damage and gain frost. So that's her tome. Let's go over her master cards here. For the most part, she has a couple abilities. One is silence. Each hit master must use two of the cards uh, from their karma pool. That's pretty crazy. You got two copies of that. We have a lot of abilities for frostbite. Each hit master and up to two unoccupied target spaces gain frost status. She will put frost status all over the place because look how many cards have frostbite. And then finally, this ability right here, Endure. When you lose this card from your battle deck, so if you're taking damage, if you take nine damage and flip this card over into your discard pile, Endure allows you to prevent all further damage, uh, loss of life. You cannot heal this card. That's crazy. It's pretty cool. It's on three different cards here. This one has a really awesome attack pattern. And that's, uh, that's Yuki's card, so let's move on to the next master that came in this set. He's the first master that actually has two models. Technically, though, it's just one model with a status token called Saru, but he comes with this little monkey friend as a model as well. You can use a status token if somebody else is in that same spot because he's just a status. He can share that space. Essentially, what this does is he runs around, when he takes a move action, or when Mitsuo takes a move action, then Saru gets to move up to four spaces. And then when you, certain cards will allow you to spend your attacks as if they came from, from Saru. So it extends his range for his abilities and such. Mitsuo has a built-in uh, karma ability of focus and draw. He has a discard and draw twice version of it when he's restored. You can see I just pretty much explained the Saru status. He also has Monkey Doo. That's what the adapt is. This is how he is allowed to originate attacks from Saru instead of himself. And his abilities here, or his, uh, his tome actions, he can relocate Saru. He can relocate to any uh, legal adjacent space. He can equip his loot, which allows him to get plus one uh, attack when targeting masters adjacent to Saru. You can see he can remove statuses from, a, from any master uh, and to heal. This, um, let's just 
flip through some of these. This is really cool. It's Song of Ambush. Basically, masters adjacent to Mitzvah will take three damage, but if they're also adjacent to both you and Saru, they take five instead. Uh, that can be really powerful in multiplayer games or team games where a lot of opponents are on you at one time. And his final ability here, Exercise, deal one damage to a master on your board for each card in their Karma pool. So characters who rely on Karma, such as um, Doku Baba from the other expansion, they can possibly take a lot of damage from this. So, going over the master cards though, we have Distraction. A lot of his cards have Distraction. What that does is he allow, he's able to relocate Saru to an adjacent, uh, to the master hit by this attack. He has a bunch of cards with that. I'll just flip through these real quick so you can kind of look at the stats. He has Weaken. Uh, that's a new ability. Each targeted master must exert. And you can see the range is pretty cool on that. He has the normal Patience, which these are pretty powerful attacks. Seven, but plus two if you don't move. Well, I mean, they only target one space though, but still. And then this one's an interesting card because pretty much it just gives you a focus action. But, I mean, you don't really attack anybody. Zero attack. Interesting. And then you have this silence card allows you to uh, hit masters, discard two cards. So, or use two cards from the karma pool. Last, we have the Yeti. The Yeti has 27 cards in his deck. Pretty hefty deck. He has an average karma of four and an average attack of five. For the most part, though, a lot of these cards are just general stuff that you can find in the core rules. Uh, but I will go over to this Reflex Chest Eyes. You can use this card as a defense to remove all effects of an attack that targets your master. After the attack resolves, the attacker must lose that attack. That is really, really cool. Other than that, it has a lot of the, the standard affair. And we'll just flip through some of these. They got some pretty high karma on some of these. But the average is, uh, is still pretty low. Anyway, that's the Yeti, and that's the Legend of the Icy Peaks. Let's uh, go back and I'll tell you what I think. And there you go, that's the Legend of the Icy Peaks expansion for Yashima. It's one of those character expansions that's a no-brainer. If you like Yashima, buy it. Even if you don't like the characters or the comedy that come with it, like the play styles and such, it doesn't really matter because you expand the roster of characters that you already have, and then the players that you're playing with will probably enjoy that as well. And who knows, as you play the different combinations, it could you know fit in or whatever. So even if you don't really care what's going on in this expansion from what I've shown you, it's probably still worth adding into the collection. With that being said, I will say that uh, Yuki, the Frost Girl, she is super annoying to play against. Really <laughs> irritating to play with, because you're like, I know they're mad at me. But it's kind of like playing a certain uh, blue color in a certain card game, you're just being annoying. Right, you're putting frost over the place and you're freezing people and since they're frozen they can't exert so they can't move through that terrain. It's just super annoying. I felt like it really locked down one character in particular which was Doku Baba from the, uh, the other expansion. I just felt like every, a lot of her spellbook abilities allow her, need her to exert to do it and so you're getting frozen all the time and it was just kind of annoying. But I don't play the game one-on-one -on -one anyway. So, or at least not that much. I've played it one-on-one. -on -one. I prefer it in teams, but I feel like that matchup might be a little bit interesting, or maybe somebody who's better at playing her would do a lot better than I did. I just felt like I got locked down. So she's slightly annoying, but really fun to play with. Uh, she also has probably my, the ability that I like the most in the game, which is the one where if you take damage and you flip it over, and it, you know it shows up, then it stops the rest of the damage. I thought that was really, really cool because it's like a gamble, right? Because when you lose, when you tougher damage, you can discard cards instead, but this is like, oh, come on, come on, yes! Kind of like a pressure luck kind of thing. I, I really like that. I thought it was a cool addition. Um, the other character, uh, Mitsuo, uh, he's really cool. I thought that his, his little uh, monkey pet that's running around was going to do a little bit more, uh, more like a, a follower, like a skeleton and a necromancer kind of thing where he can go around and attack and everything. Yeah, you can cast your, your spells through him and it's neat, uh, and it's, but it's basically just a status token that moves around and you can cast spells from it, which is really, really useful because I like the idea in his spell book that he has where if you're next to both of them, you take a lot more damage. I thought that was a cool, uh, cool concept and and just overall, he's a really neat character. I like I like his design. He's he's pretty good, well designed. Probably not somebody I'm going to play a lot, but uh, I, I'm looking forward to look for more expansions.
that adds other models, you know, where the, you've got the master and then maybe like a follower or whatever. I think that would be uh, really cool. And this is, this is if, if we're going to keep seeing expansions like this, I'm happy. So uh, I like the addition to the uh, terrain uh, where you can slip around or whatever. And, um, you know, again, like I said in the other review uh, of the other expansion, I feel like maybe if they added some more relic tiles uh, or, or something, you know, but that's not the focus of the expansions. I get it. This is more of a character expansion. Uh, maybe some scenarios. I don't know. That'd be cool. I like scenarios. So anyway, like I said, no brainer. Even if you don't like the play styles that have been presented to you, it's probably still good to just to throw them in there. So if you have any questions, feel free to email, email me at timjanette at gmail.com. Follow me on social media below. Check out my podcast, The Meeple Core Podcast, on iTunes and YouTube. Uh, until next time, keep on rocking and rolling dice. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.